You're listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm Tabitha Moreto, the host for today. Our guest today is Anthony Maloney, CEO and founder of Melcare, an early-stage biomedical company commercializing therapeutic products in a global market for eye, wound, skin, and ENT care. Anthony has been the commercial partner for clinics in the UK, Germany, and Australia investigating wound care and eye disease. He innovated the marketing of medical honey products in a global market. Without further ado, welcome to the show, Anthony. It's a pleasure to have you here. Hi, Tabitha. Thank you very much. So, Anthony, I'm very curious about this uh, line of products that you have developed. So, please tell us more about this Manuka honey range that you have developed. Well, honey has a long history of use, and it goes back well over two, two to 5,000 years where it's been used for a range of things, from wound care and eye care. And I guess what we've done is we looked at how we could use put that into a modern context. And the unique thing about Australia, we have this very rich floral diversity, which gives us a great range of honey. There's probably more types of honey than in any other country. And we thought that, look, if we're going to, to look at the medical use of honey, let's start with what is the most appropriate honey to use. And so we looked at all the different types of honey and we found that one species, the leptocerin species, commonly called manuka or tea tree, tend to have a more resistant antibacterial activity. So all honeys are antibacterial or um, have some antibacterial activity, but the honeys from this species tend to be more resistant in the, and, long, and good longevity in the antibacterial activity. So that was the basis of the products that we then subsequently developed. Wow, that's very interesting information, Anthony. Okay, so from what I know, this uh, honey range helps people with uh, a disease which is called MGD. So can you tell us how does this particular uh, Manuka honey range help people with this disease? Well, there's many causes for um, dry eye disease. And if we look at, we're, we're focusing here on particularly on evaporative dry eye. Now, if we look at the tear film anatomy, there's three components to it. There's an oil component, uh, which prevents evaporation. There's an aqueous component, which is the lubricant. And there's a mucin component, which really helps hold it all together and hold onto the ocular surface. Now, the part that we're interested in is in the lipid oil component. And these are produced, this oil is produced by the glands along the eyelid margin. Now, if those glands become dysfunctional for any reason or the oil film is broken down, then that results in a fast evaporative rate of the eye, of the tear on the eye. And so what our products do is they help improve that. Now, the way that's done is fairly complex. When people have a rapid dry eye, it's characterized by this witty surface of the eye, um, vision acuity uh, drops off, uh, feels like you might have sand under the eyelids, uh, you have red eyelid margins, thickening of the eyelid margins, and you have this proliferation of bacteria that tend to live on the eyelid margins. Now, these bacteria cause an inflammatory response, and one of the ways they do that um, is that they release enzymes that break down the oil. So not only are they a problem on the surface, they're breaking down these oils which you need anyhow, and these fatty acids that are ultimately formed cause this low-grade inflammatory response on the eyelid margin. That further constrains these glands that are producing this oil. Now, the nice thing about the honey has this low pH and its high sugar content, and that tends to reduce these colonizing bacteria in significant proportion. Less bacteria means more oil production, better gland performance, and more oil on the ocular surface. And the whole tear film anatomy improves, leading to less dry eye. And then the, as a result of that, greater comfort for, for uh, the person who has the chronic dry eye. Wow, very fascinating information, Anthony. So can you tell me how many people does this affect, this uh, MGD disease? Um, in a typical population, it's up to t up to 20%. It really depends on how you measure it. And in the Asian population, no, it's much higher. It can be up to as high as 60%. Why that is, we don't know. So it's a really significant portion of the population. We'll get dry eye and then go on to get chronic dry eye. And that's where it's more difficult to manage and the, the longer, you know, it's always there. It may not be as bad all the time, but you always have it. Anthony, so can you tell me what are the common causes of MGD? Well, 
The root cause is difficult to pinpoint, but uh, gradually with age, typically, um, the glands don't produce the same quality oil. There's not this the myobomian glands along the eyelid margin uh, reduce the production of oil and then we tend to get these bacteria then grow there as well and they then cause this low-grade inflammatory response which leads to the thickening, reddening of the eyelid margin um, and even less oil on the eye surface and therefore less oil on the eye surface means that the tear evaporates much quicker. And so people have to use lubricants and you might have to lub use lubricants up to three, four, five times a day. But still, you wake up in the morning with these eyes that are sore, painful, feel like you've got sand under the eyelids, um, and it can be really debilitating for people. They can't watch TV for very long without using lubricants, difficulty reading, or difficulty driving. And so it can be quite profound for people who have chronic dry eye. And this is where the drops. And, and from the clinical work and the clinical paper that's just come out, there was a significant improvement in the tear film quality which meant uh, reduction in symptoms, less red eye, less grittiness, less pain, um, and a reduction in the requirement to use lubricants. And that is profound for someone who has chronic dry eye. Okay, this is very interesting information. So, Anthony, can you tell me now about any uh, misconceptions you want to clear up, especially about Manuka honey? Look, uh, Manuka honey comes from the Lipsperma species. Uh, there's about... 83 of them, and they all evolved on the east coast of Australia, and sometime in the past, one of them went all the way across to New Zealand. And so both countries produce Manuka honey. Australia just gets it from a range of leptospermum species. Now, it's not always the same, and so part of our investigation is understanding, well, which of the leptospermum plants produce the best Manuka honey? How do we blend it, and how do we make it up to a medical standard? And it's really quite exciting they are a standout plant uh, around the world in terms of the consistency and quality of the antibacterial honey. Now, it does come from both countries. It does come from, we have New Zealand manuka and we have Australian manuka. Australian manuka has been collected by beekeepers in Australia for well over 100 years and it's been called manuka. Um, and so both countries really work together because they have this unique position in the world of being able to do these medical honeys for a range of indications, whether it be wound care, eye care, nasal care, uh, for the world. The nice thing about using honey, it has few contraindications. It's a, it's a natural product. Um, it's clinically very effective um, for when it's used appropriately, uh, and the products are a high standard. And as we see now, we see wound care, honey wound care products as well accepted globally, and we're seeing a rapid uptake in uh, the use of honey for eye care. Wow, that's amazing, Anthony. Okay, so uh, speaking of Manuka honey, are there any other sicknesses or conditions where Manuka honey can be used? Look, our focus is really on the topical use of, of honey, and they relate it to the use of for chronic dry eye, for wound care, uh, for skin care. The nice thing about honey, it has this low pH, and with this low pH, um, if you use it with an emollient, it's really good uh, for topical use on the skin. Our skin tends to have a low pH anyhow, and if we disrupt that through eczema or dermatitis, then we get an inflammatory response on, on the skin and bacteria grow, and then we have this condition, you know, like a scaly, red, inflamed skin, which is dermatitis. The nice thing about a honey, or when honey is used as an emollient, uh, it brings the pH of the skin down very, very quickly to what it should be, and then restrict some of those bacteria that are causing the inflammatory response on the skin in the first place. The other way we use the honey products, we've developed a nasal spray. And it's very similar to the eye care product and was used for chronic rhinosinitis. And clinical study has just been finished. And again, it significantly improved the symptoms of chronic rhinosinitis. Now, it's interesting that there's a close correlation between people who have chronic dry eye and chronic rhinosinitis. Um, and there's a common nasal lacrimal canal that connects the eye to the nasal cavity anyhow. So the result was not completely unsurprising, but it's really interesting in sitting there where, where we want to do more work in. Okay, excellent, Anthony. So what is your main takeaway message to all of our listeners? Oh, look, there, there are a range of, of medical honey products that have good clinical evidence and 
that can be used often as a first line of defence, whether it be as a cough syrup, chronic dry eye uh, or chronic wound care. And again, serious conditions should always be managed under medical supervision. All right. Thank you so much, Anthony. So what is the best way to get in touch with you guys or especially people who want to purchase your product? Well, the best way is to come through our website. Uh, it's available through many pharmacies. Uh, it's also available from optometrists, the eye care product. Um, but if people come through to the website, that will direct them and there's contact details on our website, which is melcare.com. Okay. Thank you so much, Anthony. And that was Anthony Maloney, the CEO of Melcare Biomedical. We've just been talking about the wonderful benefits that Manuka Honey and how it helps people with MGD. I'm Tabitha Moreto, and you're listening to Health Professional Radio.